Hey there folks and friends, Connecting Dots here. It's Saturday, August 6, 2014. Okay, so if you're a regular reviewer of mine, you may have been noticing how I've been easily debunking this entire theory that the Pacific Ocean is dead. Well, actually, they changed their tune. It went from dead to almost dead, and now they're saying it's dying. Well, I've been easily disproving it, article after article, showing how there's bumper crops of, uh, or should, bumper runs of salmon, I should say. 2013 was a bumper run. They're saying 2014, all these different articles, massive run. I've shown even uh, massive amounts of lampreys, a, a boom of lampreys. Uh, this latest story, yeah, in population increase in the blue whale, I've talked about how there's even been a lot of fish found on the west coast specifically, species that they've never seen before. You know, a scuba diver, 17 years scuba diving the west coast uh, and uh, the same area, and she said she's never seen so many diverse marine life as she has in this last year and again here the blue whale poo could be saving you no i'm not making this up they're making this up here i don't believe it can be the planet's survival but it goes on to say how it may be the backbone of this whole ecosystem and oddly enough again if you're watching the videos on two different occasions i talked about the food chain and how this fecal matter and how this whole story that came out of the marine uh, california um marine biology study how they'd found that the one specific location on the west coast that they've been studying for i think it was 24 years they'd never seen so much uh, dead decaying poo and whatnot on that location it was up like 98 percent of the ocean floor in that area was covered with this stuff well that goes back and uh, backs up this whole thing that i've been showing how there's actually a boom of growth on the west coast just yeah so again here this story here talks about how the blue whales have bounced right back here. They're at a low of 460 here in, in the 1970s, but now they're up to 2,200 blue whales in the current Pacific, in the, sorry, in a population in the Pacific Ocean, according to a new study. And uh, the key point to the study is that the West Coast blue whale population of around 2,200 is fully capable of supporting the whole ocean ecosystem in the Pacific West Coast, said University of Washington scientists Cole Monahan, Trevor Branch, and Andre Bunt. Now, th this is interesting because if you go down there, this all goes back to what I was talking about, the fecal matter. So it turns out the blue whales also maintain the ocean's ecosystem. When the whales dive deep into the ocean and feed, they release a fecal plume that rises to the top and supports plankton growth. Isn't that something, folks? I hope you're connecting the dots on all of this, because as I'm finding this story, it just reiterates and reinforces why we're seeing a boom in the Pacific West Coast, how wildlife, marine life specific, specifically, is coming back in enormous amounts, and it turns out that it's all about whale pump. Yeah, imagine that. This biological process here, whale pump, starts a series of biological events, and if you watch my videos, I show this whole uh, plankton how these microscopic parasites, how they all feed and feed another one and then a bigger one and eats that one and then yeah, it turns out it's in your fish. What can I say? It's one of the things I learned on the farm. You give them poo and it grows a lot. So big and blue and full of poo and it turns out they're concerned about what? Boats. Yeah, not radiation, not pollution. They're, concern, they're concerned about the boats hitting them because it turns out they're too slow, these things. They're the largest animals on the planet, and uh, they grow in length here. They say 33 meters, up to 100 feet in length. Uh, they weigh around 200 tons. Yes. <laughs> Two to three times more than the heaviest known dinosaurs. Their heart alone is equal to a car. It says that when they exhaust, or when they exhale, the blue whales can throw water as high as 30 feet. So yeah, it's not all dying, but you know what? There is death on the ocean, and we got to remember that. So this story is basically how a rare sunfish had been found by kids on the beach here at Cape, Cape Disappointment. Um, but hold on here, because this goes to back up this whole thing, how the Pacific Ocean is booming. So the story comes out of Washington waters here, and it says that a seven-foot ocean uh, sunfish was found, a rare one, and the uh, biological technician here, June Moeller, that you just saw in the picture, says it's rarely, uh, uh, it's, it's really an odd-looking fish, she says on, on Friday, and she says, I knew what it was, it's the Mola sunfish. Uh, she says, it's around, but they're uncommon, probably more likely in warmer waters, and basically that reiterates what I'm saying these warmer waters are bringing in all kinds of different new marine life 
So yeah, the ocean's not dead. It seems to be booming. And I know a lot of you, you know, you see this uh, dead fish and you're like, oh, that's terrible. You know, it is kind of awful the fish die. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of things out in the ocean. Because if you read that story, it shows how the very next day it, the ocean came back in the tide and pulled it right back out in the ocean. Guess what's happening right now? The hermit crabs, the crabs, crustaceans, everything, the sea enemies, they're breaking all the little parts. It's feeding a whole lot of sea life out there. And I want you to pay attention closely here, how you've all been told that this type of green uh, algae is non-existent and never been seen before on the West Coast. Why isn't a biological technician taking a look at this and saying, look at this, there's a rare, unbelievable algae we've never seen? Because this exists before. The story that the person that's telling you this has been spending a lot of time underwater, not enough time in tidal pools taking a look what's going on. They spent their time in scuba deer harvesting crops underwater okay so uh, this is not uncommon and also pay notice how the green algae is only at one location which is what I mentioned um, the whole concept that you're being told that everywhere along the Pacific West Coast everywhere where there's rock it should be covered with um, algae and uh, all kinds of uh, yeah it's most of it is bare a lot of the times and this stuff is patchy so more stories here. Should we be concerned about a tsunami? Well, uh, they might be. They might have a case, but I don't think it'll hit Fukushima or any other reactor plant, and here's why. So this whole event um, started unraveling nine months ago when this existing island here, they say 600 miles off the coast of uh, south of Japan. Uh, I think they may be off by that one, but regardless, so this existing island, uh, Nishimo, Shima, um, all of a sudden next to it a volcano erupted and it's basically grown into an island. Now I'm going to run through here a series of uh, images. Hit, just hit the space bar to pause the video, hit it again to unpause it. I just want to get to the story but I want to share these pictures first. So when the story first came out, it was kind of interesting, you know, a new Japanese island is forming in the Pacific Ocean, but now it's, uh, you know, it's changed a little bit. And you may recall, this is not the first time we've had other stories like this, except there they had an earthquake. And after the earthquake, well, um, yeah, an island roughly, uh, they say 600 feet by 300 feet wide appeared out in the ocean. So um, I'll leave a link down below if you want to go watch the whole thing. And... Uh, yeah, people were just shocked. Hooray, they said, yeah. Anyways, it turns out this island, they said, uh, was full of methane. As you can see, it takes the lighter to it. And look at the flames. And scientists believe it wouldn't stick around. So anyways, long story short here, their concern um, that a, a similar event could take place, but um, opposite, they're concerned about of an earthquake. But they're mostly concerned about the tsunami. So it says here uh, that this... Uh, um, this volcano is still giving off smoke and it continues growing at a rate of 200,000 cubic meters in volume per day thanks to the lava flow and that's enough to fill about 80 Olympic sized swimming pools they say. Now the scientists here, Tokyo scientists are saying that if the lava continues to mount on the eastern area, and I'll show you here, I got a 3D map, it'll be deposited on a steep uh, slopes and they're concerned about this because they said it could cause an instability on the slope so a partial collapse of the island may occur we need to carefully observe the growth process. So all the links that you see in this video, uh, sorry, everything you see in this video is linked down below here. Here's the 3D uh, maps. So the green part is what we see out of the ocean, that's rise out of the ocean. Here's the depth meter on the side here. And um, I guess this gray part is where they're concerned of it coming out here on the eastern area. Here's another 3D model and I believe this must be the slope they're concerned that uh, if this topples over, massive wave, or I should say a, a seismic wave from 12 million cubic meters of collapsing volcanic rock would create a tsunami that would send three feet of water slamming into the nearby town of Chinchijima and its 2,000 inhabitants within minutes at bullet train speed. Okay, to give you an idea where this, this is all taking place, uh, this is the island here they're concerned about. And there's a few other islands nearby. Um, let me zoom out a little bit, and this is the location where that uh, Nishishimo Shima Island is, where the volcano is, is. And let me back out a little more so you can see where we are in comparison to Japan. So we're quite a, 
uh, distance away. They said 600 miles. I, I believe it might be a little further than that. But regardless, um, they're quite a distance away. Now, they have another concern, though. So it goes on to say here how uh, we studied the situation this morning and we are thinking of consulting with earthquake prediction experts about the probability of this actually happening and what kind of measures we would be able to take. Well, um, evacuate is all I can think of. But it goes on to say here there's apparently also the possibility that the island could explode. Yes, according to the Japan Coast Guard officials say that a cone-shaped mound of congealed lava inside a volcanic vent there could seal off movement of magma and raise interior pressure within the island which might eventually result in a large-scale explosion mm, I just find it odd that it's a the Coast Guard that's actually saying this and not someone you know from that field regardless should we be concerned I don't think so it's quite a far distance away and um, I, because we also have the fact that since the last tsunami, well, there's no reactors are online. Everything's turned off right now. Needless to say, all eyes are on. There's, they're going to be uh, monitoring the situation very closely. Uh, they're concerned. Should you be concerned? I'd say relax. The fear is not good. I'm not here to promote fear. I'd rather inform you. And I'd also like to inform you that it's been brought to my attention again that some of you are not getting your notifications. I make a video. YouTube slash Google is supposed to send you a notification and let you know that I'm making a video. Well, what can I say? I received two emails and both of them complained the same thing. Hey Connecting Dots, drop by your YouTube channel. It turns out you've been making more videos lately and how come I'm not being told? Well, guess what? Uh, they're not telling you. So my advice to you is come directly to my YouTube channel, Connecting Dots 2, and go check out my uploads. And uh, it's the same situation here at Connecting Dots 3. I make sure that the upload's at the top so that way there you can stay. Uh, on top of this, oh by the way, Dabu7 has not contacted me, he does not want to try and debunk me, he knows that whatever, and his latest BS, I don't know if you caught this, but his video right now today is how all these cyber attacks are taking place, if you go read the print, if you go do the research, you go read the website and what they're actually monitoring, yes some of them could be spam bots and whatnots, but the fact is, you know what anonymizers are? Yeah, well, he's not telling them that part. Instead, he's going to be like, wow, another attack. Oh, man. Anyways, I'm not into the fear mongering. And he knows that. He knows that I do real research. So I guarantee you, I've debunked him. Don't have to worry about Ebola. The cure's in there. I've uploaded it a while back. None of these guys want to talk about this. They just want to scare the bejesus out of you. Turns out the CIA has known about the cure for Ebola using silver, colloidal silver of all things. Yeah, the same silver that uh, Canada makes, the Canadian silver maple leaf coins, which, by the way, silver is at an all-time low. You may want to get in there and buy your Canadian silver maple leaf coin. Buy two of them. I'll make a video soon, and I'll show you how to make this stuff. Pennies a dose, not even pennies. A fraction of a penny it'll cost you for you to keep yourself healthy and fight off all neural anything that you have to concern about all these uh, uh, war toxins and war germs and everything this is according to the CIA microbiologist's own words he was asked on national television is there any natural cure for anthrax or any other type of germ warfare and he said the only thing we found was colloidal silver he quit in 1997, or should say he, he stopped working or whatever his contract at CIA. He started his own laboratory, retested again in, 19 in 1997. Again, same results. I'll be on that in the future, and I'll also be talking about direct democracy, because if we're going to get out of the troubles that we're in right now, it's not going to start with the current voting system. We have to scrap it, or, or we're going to have to go like Switzerland, direct democracy, or you're going to stay a prisoner for the rest of your life, guaranteed.